As the Diocese of Jefferson City prepares to receive a new shepherd for our local church, it's a great opportunity to point out the particular relationship between a bishop and his priests and deacons. First of all, it's, it's illuminating just to note the full title that the book that contains the rites of ordination. They're the rites of ordination of a bishop, of priests, and of deacons. Just as there's only one Christ who is the head of the church, so there's only one bishop who is the head of the local church. Priests and deacons are always plural for a diocese. Being ordained a priest or a deacon is to join a whole body of priests or deacons who collaborate under the bishop to serve the church and the diocese. So let's begin with the priests. The bishop is the head of all the priests in the diocese who together are called a presbyterate or a council of priests. The church teaches that the priests are the closest collaborators of the bishop. This doesn't mean that the priests are the best friends of the bishop. Rather, it means that the priests have a greater share than anyone else in the priesthood and ministry of the bishop. They're also usually his closest advisors in that ministry. The Diocese of Jefferson City has about 90 parishes, and the bishop needs a lot of priests to work with him in the task of ministering to all of those parishes. They have a share in his priesthood and ministry, just as the bishop has a share in the priesthood and ministry of Christ. The priests gathered around their bishop is an icon of the apostles gathered around Christ. In relation to his priests, the bishop has the fullness of holy orders, whereas there are certain things that priests are un unable to do. Only a bishop, for example, can ordain others as deacons or priests. Only a bishop can consecrate the sacred chrism oil that we use in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. Also, priests are allowed to absolve sins in confession only because the bishop grants them the faculty to do so. But the relationship of the bishop to his priests is much more than merely work-related. There's a profound spiritual connection that also binds them together. In a sense, the bishop is a father figure for his priests, begetting them in the priesthood, but also providing for them and fostering their growth in the spiritual life. On their ordination day, priests place their hands in the hands of the bishop, and they make a solemn promise of respect and obedience to the bishop and his successors. Now, the other side of that promise is the expectation that the bishop will always do the best that he can to take care of the priests. This is why it's a big deal for priests whenever a new bishop is appointed. It's like getting a new father. And it has a profound effect on their ministry as well as on their spiritual and personal life. Deacons have a direct relationship to the bishop that doesn't pass through the priests. They're not the subordinates of the priests, though they are of a lower rank in the ministry of holy orders. They, too, make a promise of respect and obedience to the bishop. In some ways, the priests are ordained to be the chief counselors of the bishop and the deacons to be his hands and feet, his eyes and ears. Deacons serve as ambassadors of the bishop, going out to the peripheries, to extend the bishop's reach, but also bringing back to him everything that they see and learn so that he can know the needs of his whole flock. Most often, the assignments given them by the bishop are to assist the pastors in serving the parishes throughout the diocese, but they could also be assigned to serve the bishop directly. Similar to the priests, when the bishop ordains deacons, he bestows a portion of his own ministerial spirit upon them, and thereby he also establishes with them a spiritual father-son relationship. He provides for them, encourages their growth in virtue and wisdom, and holds a concern for their psychological and emotional health as well. In addition to this father-son relationship that the bishop has with both priests and deacons, the fact that all three share in the one sacrament of holy orders, 
though by differing degrees, means that the bishop is also a kind of brother for both deacons and priests. He supports and shares in all the ministerial joys and struggles of the priests and the deacons. So as Bishop Gatos retires and Father McKnight prepares to become the fourth bishop of this diocese, please pray for the priests and the deacons who are deeply affected by the change. We're receiving a new boss, a new shepherd, a new father, and a new brother. Let's pray that the relationship may be strong and enduring. Ad multos anos to our new shepherd.